Hello, and welcome to another episode of Something Something Chat Show. Presents, no, Something Something Chat Show with Tom Jr. Jackson presents. After the movie review, holiday edition, episode five. And today we'll be discussing the 2009 edition of Disney's A Christmas Carol, directed by Robert Zemeckis. But first, do take the time to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let you know when a new episode of my show goes up, or any of my shows go up. And as well, check the descriptions below to watch, uh, not to watch, to check out the channels I'm going to mention. I'm sorry to be pointing like that. Shouldn't be doing it. Uh, check out the Post Geek Singularity YouTube page, which is ran by Robert Meyer Burnett. And he has shows like Midnight Musings, Midnight Metal, Observations, Let's Get Physical Media, Winning About Movies, uh, Fully Articulated, Latin, X-Men, but that name is going to be changing soon, so probably by the next time. You know, at some point, oh, they're, they're, they're thinking about changing the name, but I, I like Latin X-Men. It's the uh, first show on the Post Geek Singularity YouTube channel that's all in Spanish. Oh, 97% in Spanish, I should say. And also, ladies of the PGS, hosted by Midnight Musings co host RM. Uh, you can find Ladies of the PGS live every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, only on the Post Geek Singularity YouTube channel where they talk about everything from Marvel to DC to embracing masculinity to um, sci fi, sex, and horror, and so much more. So check it out. Why don't you? And speaking of RM, she's got her own channel called Positive Fandom, where she does unboxings, reviews, of uh, movies, TV shows, uh, out of the theater reviews, uh, trailer reactions, and so much more, as well as every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, you can check out Sunday Brunch Live, where RM and her co-host, Russ Whitfield, will parlay all the pop culture that's fit to parlay in a single show. So check it out, watch it. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. This is After the Movie Review, episode five, holiday edition. And today we're gonna to be discussing Disney's A Christmas Carol directed by Robert Zemeckis. Now, if there was a famous classic Christmas story, I would say it would have to be Charles Dickens' immortal classic, A Christmas Carol. And in 2009, Robert Zemeckis teamed up with the people at Disney and brought together Jim Carrey, Gary Oldman, Colin Firth, Robin Roy, and Bob Hoskins to do a... Animated version of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now, that being said, it was done with people in motion capture suits. As a matter of fact, on the Blu ray, you get the option of watching the movie with the movie. And then watching it with all the motion capture work along with it. And that's pretty cool. That's a cool thing to watch. So you should check that one out. Um, if you don't know the story of A Christmas Carol, it's the story of Scrooge, 
a man who is selfish and stingy and rich. And one night he is visited by his deceased business partner, jo Joker, Jos not Joseph, Jacob Marley. He is visited by, he is told he'll be sp visited by three spirits in the middle of the night that goes to Christmas present, past, and future, or yet the comma, as they say in this film. And I believe in a book as well. And this movie is by far another classic and a favorite of mine where you you actually see that this is as close to the actual novel or story that you are ever going to see um, a Christmas Carol, where as in the previous iterations, they never showed uh, Ebenezer Scrooge's sister, Fawn, or Fauna. And normally the story ends with um, Scrooge, excuse me, Scrooge visiting his, um, it, it normally ends with him going to Jacob Marley's house the next day. Whereas in the story, he, and I think it's as close to the book as it can be, he goes to his nephew's house for dinner and then uh, confronts Marley at work. But um, it's, it's a great movie because it, it, the way it's done, it's so groundbreaking how they do this uh, motion capture work. Now, I want to say that there are some Easter eggs. Like, I'll give you one of them. In the movie, whew, excuse me, excuse me, it's been a long day, my friends, long day. In the movie, in the Cratchit home, it's a portrait. Uh, above uh, hanging by the fireplace. And it's a portrait of the story author, Charles Dickens. Also, this is, as I said before, this is the first Disney adaption of a Christmas story, which Scrooge doesn't visit uh, the Cratchit's house the next morning. He goes and visits his nephew and has Christmas dinner with him. And, and it all keeps true to the book. Robert Zemeckis wanted this to be as close and as faithful to the original story, the original book as can be. And even Jim Carrey said it is very much that way. And it is very much like the, the book. Um, this is the first Robert Zemeckis film where he wrote the script alone. Um, Jim Carrey modeled his actions, the voice pattern, the laughter after Alistair Sim, Alistair Sim, in the nineteen fifty one, A Christmas Carol. Uh, Sim is often regarded as the best acting portrayal of Scrooge, and that is very true. Um, this is the first project that Robert Zemeckis has done with the Walt Disney Company since um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it is Jim Carrey's only, yeah, his only movie with the Walt Disney Company as well. Um, the cool thing about this movie is that not only does Jim Carrey play uh, Ebenezer Scrooge, but he plays all the different very 
various stages of Scrooge's life. But he also plays uh, the ghost of Christmas present, past, and yet to come. And while this may have been done to um, delve into Carrie's push uh, uh, for his, his uh, physical actions and vocal performances, it might also be seen as Scrooge uh, teaching himself to be a better man. And I think that's the, I, the, the iconic view of this film that it, it's really about a man learning how to be a better person. And many people view Christmas as that time. A holiday is a time to be a better person to to give to your fellow man rather than take. Um, and, and Scrooge is one of those people who's just very much the guy comes around, can I get some money for the homeless so they don't have to go into the workhouse and he's like, well, they should be in the workhouse, they should be working, why should I have to pay them? And the man coming for the money goes, um, Well, people would rather be dead than go to the um, workhouses. And back in those days, there were workhouses. Now, Scrooge falls at least 18 times in the film. So this may be a reference to Scrooge being humble before his fellow man. The fact that he falls from high places as well as low ones. So. This is a story of someone, and it, it, it's very true that you, 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 not only can you fall from a high point in life, but you can also fall from those low places and you can hit rock bottom. Uh, at one point, Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, and Tom Hanks all auditioned for this film to voice Charles Dickens, who would narrate the movie as it went along. And I guess during the filming or before it, um, in the final cut, Dickens was cut out and instead they had Cratchit, Bob Cratchit um, narrate the film's epilogue, which works well. well. I think it would have been interesting seeing or hearing Bob Cratchit, not Bob Cratchit, uh, Charles Dickens narrating the movie like it's a story, but I like the way the movie ends up, you know, with, with the ending to it. Um, unique to this adaption of the film, it, it states that Scrooge's birthday is February 7th on his future tombstone and that the year is, 1786. Uh, so during most of the film, he is 57 years old. And when Marley dies in 1836, he is 50. So, and they even address it in the movie saying, you know, seven years later, and even Scrooge announces that, you know, you know, Jacob Marley is not here. He died seven years ago this very evening. So that is um, addressed in the movie. Um, I, I like the fact that you have real people not only vocalizing the performance, but they have to get out. And it's done with that motion capture thing. And I really like those movies where you have that done. I, Robert Zemeckis did Beowulf. He did, I want to say, Beowulf and uh, Monster House and um, why am I forgetting it? Beowulf, what's the house? The Polar Express. That's the other one he did. So really, it's it, it's an enjoyable movie and it's a classic classic 
classic film. And it's the first um, Disney film where uh, the characters are not played by another creature, like uh, a, a animal or whatever. It's it's played by humans, you know, in the film itself. So um, I I enjoy that. I, I like that a lot. Um, this is great for the holidays, whether it be around November. Sometimes around November, December, I'll pull it out and watch it. Or during the middle of the summer, it'll hit me and I'll watch the film itself. You know, it, it's 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 an enjoyable film and I like it. Um, some people may not like it, you know, and that's okay, as I said before. Not every film is going to be for anybody, for everybody, I mean. I like animated films. I love animated films. I, I've loved them since I was a kid. My father liked them. It, it, it's just a, a great thing to 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 watch and to feel like a kid again because it is okay to feel like a kid again you know you are allowed to do that it is allowed folks so that being said you have just watched episode five of the holiday edition of disney's christmas carol carol after the movie review holiday edition episode five Join me again next time for our next review, which should be, I believe it's going to be Mixed Nuts. And that's a fun one to discuss. So until next time, please remember, no matter where you go and who you are and where you'll be, we are all goof people. Thank you. Have a pleasant tomorrow. And come back and subscribe and look through my playlist so far. Exciting things to watch. I thank you all for watching and uh, come back again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>